Hey there guys, what's happening? My name is Suma Chatterjee from the Flow Zone Academy and I'm a flow state coach which means I help you perform better and feel better. In this video I want to speak to you about a concept, a law of the universe called the law, law of, attraction. of attraction. Now what exactly is the law, law of, attraction? of attraction? First of all I just want to say it's not really a law, okay? It's not like you break the law and then something terrible happens, or you get punished. It's just merely a truth of the universe, is what I would say. It's just a philosophy, an idea, a concept that helps you get more of what you actually desire in life and wish to manifest in life. I received a question, and the question goes as so. Soon, just wanted to ask you, how do the flow state and the law of attraction correlate? I've seen a few articles and videos on this and wanted to know your opinion since you always explained it in a human manner without the technicalities and intricacies. Thank you for that question. This is what I want to say about this first and foremost. I want to break some myths here. Just closing your eyes and thinking about something and thinking about something is not going to make that thing pop into your reality. Okay, you might see it somewhere on a television screen, you might see it on a billboard somewhere, but unless you really want to manifest a kind of specific reality, you're going to have to take action. Okay, the law of attraction has the word action in it. The second thing that I want you to note is to celebrate your life. Okay, we celebrate things in our life that are only good and not bad. I want you to celebrate the bad things in life too because you want to be at a high vibration when you are manifesting. Third thing, a lot of people have doubts creep in. It's like, is it really gonna manifest this thing? I'm not really sure. That doubt is going to stop you from getting what you truly want. This is not some kind of fake it till you make it. This is act it out until it is ingrained. This is recognize it until it becomes real. This law is like older than time itself, okay? It's not like, you know, Abraham Hicks maybe popularized it or Rhonda Byrne or, you know, The Secret. All these different things, I mean, the master key system, right? All of these things are just ways to say it and they're pre-packaging it in their own way. Oh, that's oh, the that's vortex. The vortex. Yeah, I want to explain to you in a human manner as possible, not alien terminologies, okay? So the first thing is that in the idea of the law of attraction, your thoughts become things. That's the kind of idea. Like attracts like, thoughts become things. And if you think of the flow state, you think of focused thinking. So in that sense, if your thoughts are more focused, you are going to truly align your thoughts and get much more clarity on your thoughts it's like if you have a fuzzy picture like if you have uh, you're watching a movie and it's not fully HD or 4k it's gonna be a little bit blurrier right it's not gonna be as crisp so what the flow state does is it makes your thoughts much more crisp because you're really really focusing in on it so focused thinking equals focused action which gives you what you want Another thing to note is the levels of consciousness. Now, there's many different levels of consciousness. There's levels of energy by Frederick Dodson. There's also a level of consciousness. Dr. David R. Hawkins has this book called Power Versus Force. I don't know if you've heard of it, but he has a scale of consciousness there. So I just want you to take a look at these three models, okay? They're very similar. The first one is David R. Hawkins' Levels of Consciousness. Notice that acceptance upwards around that is flow. Now take a look at the second model. This is from the upward spiral. Now here we also have acceptance moving upwards. Now take a look at spiral dynamics. Here we notice the yellow energy of spiral dynamics being called flex flow. Beware of what you are attached to because attachment, if you have dreams and goals and you're attached to them, that's coming from the frequency of fear. It's like, oh, I must have it. I have to have it. Otherwise, it's going to escape. So the way I describe it is a detached but intentional massive aligned action. So once you have that vision in mind, it's very clear. It's like you have a willingness to walk away from it too. 
It's like, yes, I know it's there. I know it so much that it's an intention now. It's not an affirmation now, right? What we focus on grows. We know that scientifically. It's called the selective focus, okay? A lot of people focus on their vision, but I want you to think, what is the vision beyond your vision? It's like we have a level in our minds that's, that is stopping us, that is not able, we're not able to transcend that because of cultural conditioning. So what I would say is, I want you to start to believe that manifesting is fun, easy, quick, and that you have all the time and energy and the skills needed for this to happen. You don't get what you do in life, you get what you be in life. You attract what you are, you don't attract what you want. So when you start to change your identity around things, it starts to broadcast itself, almost like a radio FM, right? If you tune into love FM frequency, it is going to impact the world around you. Who do I choose to be right now? Not what I need to do, not what I need to have, not what I need to, not the how-to, that's all ego. But who do I need to be? You'll notice a lot of yogis are like mystics. They claim to instantaneously manifest things. Now, I don't know if this is true or false. I can't say for sure because I haven't seen it with my, with my bare eyes. However, I can understand that if they are living at the higher frequency or the higher way of coming to the world with a lot of positivity, genuine positivity, not fake positivity, like just good vibes only, man. It's like real happiness, true embodiment of joy then it makes sense that there's less resistance, right? What the Bhagavad Gita says is that resistance is pain, right? So you want to understand that when you're resisting something, it's messing up your manifestations. And that flow state is also going, is accepting that resistance, being able to let that go as well. It's like understanding that there's an actual resistance, but then there's also playful resistance. In the flow state, is basically the alpha theta bridge. So what is that? Right between the conscious mind and the subconscious mind. Logical subconsciousness is genius. This is what I heard in a Bruce Lee TV show on Netflix. Okay. And the subconscious mind is great for tapping into to notice the self-sabotage, to notice the emotions that are in your emotional junkyard, to see what is in there, and be able to release them. Belief is actually going to bring you into the flow state. Right, because if you don't believe that you can do something, you're not going to take action to do that thing in the first place. If you feel you're incapable of doing it, if you feel like you don't have the skills, if you don't have the energy, you don't have the time, you can think of all the excuses and rationalization and justification for you to not take that action. Massive aligned action too. So the massive aligned action part is like, is this aligned to your identity, to your way of being? If you're taking actions that's out of your identity, you're going to feel shame for it. And again, you're going to drop back down in that chart that I showed you earlier. So this is the process of really understanding mixing flow with the law of attraction. The flow is the current of life. It's the movement forward. It's the momentum. So if you can get into that momentum and manifest from that pure space, because you are shutting down your logical mind when you're in the flow state. You're shutting down your prefrontal cortex. It's quietening down. It's slowing down transient hypofrontality, okay? Now, when you're trying to visualize something, why is it so important to feel it? Why is it so important to use all your senses in regards to the flow state? Because the flow state is all about deep embodiment. When you're in the flow state, you're fully within your body, you're out of the mind chatter. You're not in your mind anymore. Why do you, why do you feel it? You're tapping into your feelings, and what is that saying? To your neurology and physiology is like this is an intention this is a familiarity in the mind and I want more of this if this video helped you today please make sure that you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell I will see you again in another video have an amazing day may the flow be with you and stay legendary